Riding over the economy collapse, eh, maybe. Riding over non-food deliveries, absolutely. So there's routinely, it takes the food aspect, the food element. That, that you're talking about a wild card. That's the thing that tips it and sends it across to the other side on the pendulum that starts that. It's the food, the lack of food. And then in there, scattered in would be fuel pricing and uh, being able to earn a living, being able to buy things. But you can get by from community health organizations now for food and some other essentials, medicine, et cetera. But when it comes to the point where even those health organizations or health organizations don't have food to give out to the populace and there's none in the stores and it's, you can't even access your bank accounts to be able to buy the food, at that point, that's the trigger event that, that tips it over. Your host, James White. This is the 18th day of July, 2022. We're delighted to be joining you here Joining you here today, I can't speak, from Kalispell, Montana. And I am with uh, one of my favorite returning guests here on the broadcast, my good friend David Debine from Adapt2030 YouTube channel. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's really an expert at analyzing current events and being able to uh, sort of forecast what's coming up in the future based upon those events. And uh, without further delay, we're going to welcome our good friend David Debine to the broadcast today. David, thanks for being here. Let me take you off mute. Hold on a second. Uh, there you go. Always great to see you. Appreciate you having me back on. Many things have changed since the last time we've spoken. Oh, indeed they have. Indeed they have. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and let you roll with it. We're having an issue, I guess, we're getting on Rumble right now for some reason. So I'm going to work on that. But, David, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Give us the uh, give us the uh, give us the thirty thousand foot view of things, my friend. You've been studying this, as I said, for a long, long time. You're very familiar with prepping. You're very familiar with the uh, the po political sphere. You're very familiar with the socioeconomic sphere, as far as agriculture is concerned, weather, space weather. Just a wealth of knowledge and information. And again, we're delighted to have you here. I'm going to turn it over to you here, and why I'm checking out the Rumble feed. Just give us uh, give us sort of a synopsis of where we're at, David. I want to start off. If you don't know what a grand solar minimum is, it's a 400-year cycle of low solar activity on our star, otherwise known as the sun. That affects the electromagnetic field or the magnetic field of our planet. And then our jet streams and cloud cells will be able to move into different positions because the magnetic field is not locking them in places tightly. This is a forecastable cycle. And the beginning of my research, which James was referencing, was talking about as that cycle amplifies and destroys and limits natural food production and crop yields across the planet, governments were going to need to respond. And looking back through history, economies would shatter and be reformed. Population migration happens and also collapse of governments because they couldn't feed the people. And then a different way to oversee the farm called Earth comes into existence as these different changes and people become more aware. So we're starting to see all of this, and these are going to run in parallel down tracks here, and we already see that it is. We're coming into the crop losses on the natural side of things, and look how the food riots are starting and how government's behaving and how the economy is starting to tatter at the seams here. It all is just a repeating cycle in history. So by knowing the past, we can clearly see where the future goes. And that's, you know, then you can start to plug in the events on a timeline to see how close we're getting to the next set of events. This has happened many, many times before. I usually go back in my routine study back to say 400 BC, so the last six of these events. And you can start to see from start to finish where we are in the timeline and the trajectory of it. We're well into the beginning of it, so from this point forward, things are just going to amplify. So you can look for the signs, the signals, uh, the government responses as to how really close we are going into a global wouldn't say famine for everybody but famine for a lot of people and food insecurity for most david your research is impeccable Hungry people are dangerous people and overthrow governments that's what they don't want so they want to control most of what your messaging is and your control of food your research is impeccable and as and you say you go back well if like over a thousand years well over a thousand years and look at cycles yeah 2400 years 2400 years over so 2000 years <laughs> decently reliable data 2400 years based on historical events accounts etc moving forward and more into the scientific data realms now where you get really good satellite data that confirms even better what the sun's doing. 
Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan, warning economic hurricane. The worst is yet to come for Americans. Larry Summers forecast recession ahead, millions of layoffs. Big tech companies like Tesla slashing 10% of the workforce. Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs warning market another 20% to fall. Recession, Bloomberg Intelligence forecasting $2,500 gold by the end of the year. Wells Fargo sees gold hitting record highs in 2022. Long-term forecast, gold above 5,000. That's an economic collapse. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Call 1-800-356-4470 for a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated IRA gold dealer from 2016 to present. Click on that link in the description box below. And now on with the video. So since I know that you have a grasp of these things and you keep track of uh, not every single item, but I know you'll, you'll know about this. I'm on my screen right now, but you can't see. It's a zero hedge article. Gazprom declares force majeure will halt gas flows to Germany indefinitely. Germany is not oh. a third world country. Germany is a wow. major economic and industrial power in the world. And now Gazprom declares force majeure, which means circumstances out of their control have prohibited them from being able to fulfill their contract. David, if you go on, if you have your on the internet, just go to Zero Hedge. You'll see it's a top story there. You can see it. Um, Talk to me if you can without, I always suspect you probably haven't read the story yet, but I don't think you really need to. Comment on how serious and how big of a deal it is that uh, they're going to stop uh, shipping gas problems, going to stop, uh, it's going to haul gas flows to Germany indefinitely with no uh, no real relief in sight. David, David Devine. Yeah, let me link this other article right off Zero Hedge here. Germany to halt Russian coal imports next month from August 1st. Crude and coal will be all 100% halted from Russia into Germany. So if you did, you know, going with the gas, they'd already anticipated in our building or renovating community warm-up stations or community heating stations already for the winter anticipated so you don't freeze to death in your home. But now they're going to cut off the coal. This article is just a couple of days old. So all power sources going in, whether it be thermal, where they could burn the coal to make the electricity and provide to the homes, that's going to get cut off. And now the gas is getting cut off. See, they didn't have the paperwork to get that turbine back from Canada. And Canada was abiding that's right. by the right. uh, sanctions or whatnot. So the turbine that was destined to keep that continuous flow going, the turbine's not coming back in, the compressor turbine for that natural gas pipeline. I think it was Nord Stream 1. So that's a game changer. You have to think Germany being the largest economy in Europe, if they go into a stone age with darkness and people huddling around in a community warming station, because Germany gets really cold in the winter for months and months and months below freezing. I mean, what's the rest of Europe going to, this is a cascading effect. I would anticipate the end of the Euro as we know it based on that one news story right there. What does that look like, They're essentially? They're not going to be able to hold it together. They simply can't. I mean, the, the economies will be too broken up. Well, what does that look like? Sri Lanka? Does that like sh look like Sri Lanka did here 10 days ago in all major capitals throughout uh, throughout Europe, throughout the European Union? Is that, is that what we're looking at? Is that what they want? Is it, isn't this considered the U.N. food riots? Aren't they? Don't they have that in their plan? If you've investigated their plan, I think they work the old, U they're called U.N. food riots. They expect this. They know when they collapse the economy that people are going to riot. So this is something they anticipate. It's not like they're fearful of the people rioting because they're hungry. They know it's going to happen and I think they've already uh, wargamed it. David? Rioting over the economy collapse? Eh, maybe. Rioting over non-food deliveries? Absolutely. So there's routinely it takes the food aspect, the food element. That, that you're talking about a wild card that's the thing that tips it and sends it across to the other side on the pendulum that starts that. It's the food. The lack of food and then in there, scattered in would be fuel pricing and uh, being able to earn a living, being able to buy things. But 
you can get by from community health organizations now for food and some other essentials, medicine, etc. But when it comes to the point where even those health organizations or health organizations don't have food to give out to the populace and there's none in the stores and it's you can't even access your bank accounts to be able to buy the food, at that point, that's the trigger event that, that tips it over. So I would be watching more on the food end. These economic indicators heading in there, yeah, they're not going to get the gas and the coal. Okay. But where does that go for food manufacturing? What does that do for transportation of foods into the supermarkets, into the cities? You know, people in the countryside are going to have a completely different experience in this time than those living in the cities. So keep that in, in mind, too. If you know anybody who lives in the countryside, especially if you're living in Germany, get out there right now before the chaos ensues. Establish yourself as an integral rock of stability in that community so you'll be welcomed and wanted to stay when they might kick others or ask others to leave that are too lazy or not pulling their fair share of work. So it's going to be about the food, James. It always has been, always will be. People can do without a lot of things. They can do without an enormous amount of things, but once you pull that food rug out from under them, then they start to riot. Every time. You can push them up to that point. We see it in history how many times they get pushed up to that point and things get reset. Nobody gets arrested. There's a lot of money stolen, blah, blah, blah. But when the food stops, then well, it really uh, David, it's an interesting chapter. History. You, li you lived in the Far East. You're familiar with, I think you may speak Mandarin. Um, I, you lived in the Far East. I know you've, you're familiar with that area very much and done business out there. Uh, I understand that the banking system in China is teetering on on the edge and people are actually in the point where they're making bank runs i mean they're they're a hardcore communist country and their government has just about all nearly absolute rule over over their population and they're even uh rising up and uh and and, and you know they're 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 right well they're rioting yet but they're they're certainly want their money out of the bank and they realize something's not right and they're even a very pressed society like that is even rising up and, and and fighting back against the tyranny how much more so is that going to be here in america with 180 million gun owners and uh we're not really under we're under tyranny there's no denying that but we're not nearly under the grip of tyranny that they are there in china uh with the Ch with communist party it's going to be even magnified even more here in america don't you think so I do, and if I could talk about China for a second, the reason everybody's so compliant is the resistance of a few people, you'll have all of your stuff taken away so everybody else complies because then they get, you know, something boosted from the Communist Party in terms of accolades or more points on the social credit score if they turn somebody in. Okay, that worked for a minute there. But if we take a further step back in history and we start talking about emperors of Chinese dynasties, See, these Chinese dynasties only ever lasted as long as a grand solar minimum because the weather would change enough and the jet streams and cloud cells would go out of flow where the emperors at that time, and you go back all the way to Emperor Huang way back in the beginning, they call it the mandate from heaven. Basically, it's a Berkeley current that powers our star. But when that changes uh, the ability for food production, safety, and security for the nation or the... Uh, the time period of that emperor that ruled that, the dynasty period, came to an end. So the actual mandate for the ruler to rule over the people was rescinded. The mandate from heaven was removed. Now, I think we're close to that. you got to put that in historical context going back 3,000 years. Like every time the people can't be fed, they're not guaranteed safety, and their housing is taken away, the ruler has no more right to rule just by what the society has set up over the last 3,000 years there. That's a societal norm. You can't feed them. You can't clothe them. You can't guarantee security. You have no right to rule. So the populace is saying your mandate from heaven has been removed. So we're talking way above the money thing here. We are talking ingrained culture inside Chinese legacy from even going back into the Warring States and Three Kingdoms periods, way before what you consider like dynasties or emperors were a thing. There was periods prior to that going back 4,500 years. Anytime that that would happen. So now we're coming into right now, and you know, the big thing is they were trying to take their money out in bank runs, but then they would flag on their COVID uh, tracking app and said, oh, it's red, you got to go home immediately. So they prevented people even from waiting in line because they facial recognized them in line. They triggered their app and said, you have to go home now because there was too many people waiting in line to get money. And But now it's 
okay, we were just refused to pay our, pay our mortgages. And it's in mass around the entire country. They're just saying, no, we're not going to pay our mortgages. So everything is becoming bankrupt at the same time. There's not enough enforcers to go in and actually remove people from their homes. Now buildings are protecting everybody in the building. None of us are paying and none of you enforcers are coming in to try to remove a single family out of here. Quickly, I mean, it only took, what, two, three weeks. The bank run started and they used the false flag thing of the app is flagging you to go home and people quickly realize that. Ditch your phone and then head out to the bank. And there's this little device right here, four in one, aircon. Electric companies don't want you to know about this. Put your ice and your water right in here. Turn on the fan and cool down. I use this when I go camping. If we have electric at the campsites, heat pump broke one time. We were waiting for three days, 90 degrees here in East Tennessee. Use this in our room and it actually did cool us down where we could get comfortably to sleep. Turn it on. That hum means cool air coming your way. Learn more by going to easysummercool.com. That link's in the description box below. And now on with the rest of the video. You know, David, that reminds me of the Gulag Archipelago, if you've read that book where they said, uh, you know, we, uh, we burned in the camps knowing that we could have just taken some of these these minders down that came into, uh, you know, they would just literally march these people right out of their, their apartments and everybody else would stand around and let them do it. Um, and I don't think we're in the same mindset as we are, you know, now as we were then. But see, I just want to, I just want to uh, really illustrate the fact that you're not like a prophet. You're not a, pro, you know, you're not like quote unquote prognosticator. We, you're, you look at historical data. You look at cycles, and that's why I try to t tell people on the show, I've told them before, uh, David, and I'll let you get your comment on this, we're designed to think like in a linear fashion from January 1st to December 31st. That That's kind of, you know, that one timeline to another timeline. When really, when nature and everything around us, you know, operates in cycles, you know, the seasons are in cycles, and there's solar cycles, there's galactic cycles, and I don't want to sound too woo-woo, but we have, gal there's galactic cycles as well. So what you're talking about, David, is not something that, you, this has happened before, and it's it's like in nature, the cycle will happen again. So that that's I just want to really illustrate that to let people know you're not like a prophet. You don't claim to have any any special powers or no, prophet no. powers. You just look at research data and you extrapolate it out over the period of time, and you and you make I guess predictions or talk about what's going to happen. David, you could have comment on that. The crystal ball is a history book. It's really that simple. And if you do want to go into longer scientific data of cycles, well, we could go into the precession of the equinoxes. Now, our pole transits around our North Star, and we go to the different houses of the zodiac over 25,750 years. And we could talk about ice age cycles, which routinely flip back and forth on a 100-year period. Or we could bring it right back down into what I talk about, the grand solar minimum, which resets society on a 400-year. Or we could even talk about uh, the 11.8-year solar cycle, which goes back and forth. Solar maximum, solar minimum. I mean, everybody knows that. Why don't we talk about uh, El Nino and La Nina? That is a cycle too. Warm ocean, cold ocean. Warm ocean, cold ocean. And there's an enormous amount of cycles that you could follow here. Scientific data has proved all of them in terms of years out. Where the woo-woo gets in is what happened to the last 10,000 years of warmth just 100,000 years ago when our bodies were the same, our minds were the same, and we know nothing about them, haven't found even one relic, quote-unquote, from that prior civilization that had 10,000 years of warmth to develop as well. And then, you know, you go back and more of these uh, ancient societies, especially the Sumerians, talk about their king's list going back millions of years, understanding hundreds of these glaciation cycles. And where do we see it? That might get into the woo-woo, but somebody had mapped it out, and they kind of knew when the, the pole would do a magnetic pole shift or an actual geophysical pole shift and they had mapped that out as well on like where on the rotation it was on the on the mark of the axis why do you think our pole sits off not straight up and down well we shifted what's going to shift back i mean they know they knew this information you go back to the kingdoms of the maya they understood this as well the chinese have incredible records of you know the sun setting in one part of the sky and reversing itself and coming back around again all within the modern era within the last four thousand years so really in history what's true and what's not so delve back into some of these more ancient cultures that you might not have heard of, like the Hittites, for example, or the Shem or the Aksum that were all along the Red Sea and through the, the Ghana trade kingdoms from the Red Sea all the way over to the Atlantic Ocean through what's now the Sahel, which was verdant and lush forests. And 
there's a lot of history out there you can delve into, especially these cradles of civilization. Indus Valley is a, is a popular one. Mesopotamia, obviously, you know that. But what caused all these great civilizations to rise and fall and shift from verdant milk and honey, bountiful lands into deserts now? Well, it shifts back. Somebody knows these cycles are here. They know what the shift, like entry point is, determination point. The beginning of the cycle is pretty tumultuous because things moved from stability into non-stability. And this is what I'm talking about. Let's bring it into a 400-year cycle. Well, our ability to grow crops on a regular plant and harvest date is now being affected in earnest where you can see it everywhere. Crop traders know what's happening. Clearing firms for deliveries up to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange on the Chicago, Bay Detroit, Chicago Board of Trade, if I could talk. Understand that as well. We're coming into tumultuous times where the CBOT might not be able to deliver like they're supposed to or could this year, which is going to throw everything that we know as modern business into a tailspin coming in September. Well, you know, you brought up a good point to me, and it makes me think of Lake Mead, which is now losing water to the point where you've seen the pictures of the boats that are stuck up, you know, that they find stuff now at the bottom. Apparently, I think they found a body down there or something in a barrel or who knows. Anyway, the, the, the waters are receding back. It's almost like what you said, cycles. It's going to go back to a desert and, and, and one. It's almost like it's moving back to a desert where it's going to be barren again. And maybe again, in, maybe in I don't know how many hundreds of years, maybe it'll fill back up again. Uh, is that kind of what you're talking about? Things kind of revert, even though right now there's there's plenty of water in Lake Mead. I don't know how many years it, 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 it really supplied the whole southwest, Las Vegas, all those areas with water. Now it looks like it's they're really perilously close to having no more water flow in some of these areas. And I, I can believe they'll figure some way out of it, hopefully, for them. But uh, that's kind of what you're talking about, is it not? Is that kind of like like in a, in a microcosm, the Lake Mead kind of draining and going back to a desert? Yeah, is that kind of what you're talking about, David? Provided there were no dams along the rivers, yes. I mean, these natural cycles, I'll give you a good one. The West African monsoon has started to shift back to more of a, a wetter sort of flow from the Atlantic Ocean into the Sahel. And also what you consider the Gulf of Oman and that Gulf of Aden over there, it seems that there's a, a wetter pattern pulling into the Sahel from that side over there off the Indian Ocean. And they're getting higher plant production and higher crop yields in, in these areas. Well, that's a 6,000-year cycle that's onsetting again and beginning the changes. So you can go out 12,000-year cycle, 6,000, 4,400, 11. But then we got the business cycle and all these other cycles interwoven here of the fourth turning and different types of generational cycles that are happening. Economic cycles of how what's a lifetime of a fiat currency, what's a lifetime of a government or a government structure. I mean, all these things have termination points where they generally will stick on a line somewhere where on the average, something like a government, a way that it, the, the government would rule the people, it lasts about 270 years on average, a certain system. Well, in America, ours is a little bit longer. It's stuck around a little bit longer. Fiat currencies as well. We can look at like 4,000 of the last fiat currencies that collapsed. Look at the duration of those. World Reserve currencies, you can trace back a good to the 1500s, going back to the Spanish and the English and the Dutch and whatever. And there's timelines on these. Like there's a shelf life on everything we've already done once before. That's it. It's nothing we're doing now is new at all. Right. right. It's all... Yeah, it's shelf life on the previous tries of these same things. So these same... Uh, Economy, food, and climate. David, that was a brilliant statement. I think it's a T-shirt, man. I'd like to make it into one. My 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 crystal ball is a history book. I mean, that is so. That's it's pro. It's simple so but true. profound. It really is. I mean, you know, these things. That, what 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 King Solomon said. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, these things have, as you stated. Uh, you know, continued in, because it's cyclical. It's cyclical, just like in you know early, uh, uh, you know early March or early April, you can expect the, the flowers to bloom because they do it every year because it's the cycle. And I think people have to. You know, I think that's one of the way that the establishment has really been able to snooker us, if you will, is they have us again thinking. Think we're thinking in a linear fashion, and, they, and that 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 suits them. We really need to, I think, change our really change our, our, our mindset and start thinking in cycles. I think that would make a lot more sense to, to really to be able to prepare for the changes that are inevitably going to occur. And we haven't even really got into some of the real cosmic stuff with the planet alignments and things that are, I mean, that, those are another cycle for that. And, David, talk if you can here 
there's cycles inside cycles inside cycles inside cycles and i don't i mean we could keep going on and on but there is a there there's the the, the 400 the uh, the uh the glands show the minimum but even that is in a cycle isn't it in a bigger cycle which is even in a bigger cycle talk about that talk about that if you can it does seem that our education system teaches us linear time only not cyclical time Okay, if we had just even retooled the educational system from kindergarten through university that we're on a cycle and everything that you knew about time was cyclical, and then add in just the average amount of knowledge I have that is in history books that is not taught. So what if every student from kindergarten to university knows exactly what I do on the amount of data that's available in history books that should be taught, that could be taught through any high school or university classes? The amount of data that would be there on cycles and what has happened prior in history, you would not be able to control the citizens like you do now. The only reason they're under control is because they don't know that there are cycles and we've repeated these chapters and how governments responded to the same events in repeats of history. It's hard to control a populace that understands it's a cycle and when these things start to happen again, they'll know, oh wait, that's just a cycle. It's not us putting up gases into the atmosphere and the whole nitrogen thing is ridiculous because our natural atmosphere comprised of nitrogen. For the trace gas for CO2, for anybody out there that likes numbers, it's three one hundredths of one percent. What? Really? It's that minuscule? Yeah, it's under one percent. Go check it out. So nitrogen is a far larger amount of gas in the atmosphere and they're trying to demonize that now as the reason for the Netherlands and also Canada is going to be following that 